you cover a lot of this shit, but what you're covering is mostly like local news. The national news, if they had covered that Wichita and the Chattanooga shit, how do you think like people would respond to seeing that kind of brutality? Yeah, I mean <laughs> Well, think about this. It would have you know, switch their races. I mean, this is very common observation, but like imagine that kind of savagery for you know done on a sun person in America at this point in time. That would dominate news for, you know, a century. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. A <laughs> hundred years. Fuck it, damn it, Till. Fuck that. Yeah, this was this was a um, yeah, this was this was a rough one right here. Yeah. yeah you could take a room that was just somber and she could walk into it and everybody in the room was was uh having a good time automatically today and every day for 10 years gary christian thinks about his daughter more than anything she loved children a daughter he will never walk down the aisle i think she would probably be married and she would have kids children he will never get to meet uh, i think about that a lot and what they would look like and how they would be and Memories that were robbed after Shane and Christian was brutally murdered 10 years ago. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's been 10 days. It's been a decade full of seemingly endless trials and retrials to get justice for her death. What has to happen for this to feel like it's truly over? Every one of them takes their last breath. They don't deserve to be on this planet. The pain lives with Gary daily. But with like the help that. of close friends and family, he's finding ways to live, becoming a grandpa, and seeing traces of Shannon and her young nephews. If they smile a certain way, they look exactly like Shannon. And sometimes I just think that they came along right when they did to be a part of um, changing me. Um Letting me see some hope. It's been 10 years without his only daughter, 10 years since he felt her hug. But Shannon's presence is everywhere for her father. I feel her when I can do something to make a difference. I feel her when I'm just about to go to sleep. Sometimes I can actually relive something. It's like a dream, but it's not. It's real. But it feels like it just happened. And I love those moments. I have to live. Her mother has to live. The Newsoms have to live. One of those brief moments where they come back. All those lynchings in Tennessee back in the day, that were for no reason, though, right? Someone kills one of my kids. I'm going to prison. Garbage truck. Uh, I'm saying if someone killed one of my kids, I'm going to prison. To, I'm going to get moved to their to their block. But you, that man, that man got to live for for, the, for them grandkids. He can he can't just throw it all away, man. That man was left as a grandpa. Barbed wire. Yeah, man. Garbage trucks, junkyards, graffiti. The area around Chipman Street in Knoxville, in a word, ugly. But one spot is a lot prettier than 10 years ago. Today, a decorated cross stands in memory of Shannon Christian and Chris Newsom, where a house once stood and both were raped, tortured, and murdered. You know, on one hand, you say, wow, I can't believe it's been 10 years. And on the other hand, it seems like yesterday. Shannon's mom, Dina Christian, keeps a scrapbook of happy memories. One of my favorite pictures is of her pouting on an Easter Sunday with her hair and rollers. The 21 wonderful years that we had with her, and then, of course, it ends. But 10 years after the murders, the photos that truly stick with Dina are of the crime scene. Chris Newsom shot and his body burned on railroad tracks. Your daughter's broken body stuffed in a trash can. That was the devil, pure evil. For 10 years, the fight for justice grinds on. 
It took five trials, a couple of retrials, and now nonstop appeal. Five trials, a couple of retrials, and now nonstop appeals. You gliders have fucking created something that was not intended for this. That's crazy. And how, how can you also not? created Africanized killer bees. So think about that. I mean, we, our folly true. knows no bounds. How can these people not be racist? <laughs> like, yeah, he gets an pass. Uh, you know, he gets an pass or two. I think the older I, I get, the more the more bigoted I become. Like I, I would even blame them. I would tell them, you have to let it out. So court ordered, federally approved N word pass. <laughs> for real. Shit. Real shit. <laughs> Just for one time. Nah, man. nah, man. You, he, he, he deserves a lifetime pass, man. Yeah, man. He deserves. <laughs> well, and it's, and, and it comes from Osa. Osa is pro black as it comes, but he's he. he you keep it fair. It yeah, no, no. He he just he just keeps it fair like us. I mean, yeah, he's maybe I'm pro black. He straight went at your head. Osa called you pro black. Nah, he's right. I am, man. But this ain't Damn. it. This ain't what I'm pro. Ouch. These niggas could go. <laughs> These ain't Damn, the pro man. So, You know that's a slur over here, Mark. <laughs> my bad. My bad. My Low bad. I, I apologize. <laughs> Low key, man. Low key. I, I ain't going gonna, gonna to hold it against you, Mark, man. I rock Damn. you, man. Peels to keep five people behind bars and the ringleader on death row. We were told from the get-go that this would be a lifelong commitment, and I made a promise to Shannon that I would fight till the day I die for justice. I read somewhere that they'd been to court over 100 times. And they get to hear the details of this incredibly savage murder. And they got to see the family of the, of the killers over there. I love you, baby. <laughs> this, <laughs> is why, <laughs> this is why I would get locked up and I would go and I would get to his block and I would do the same thing to him. Yeah, but you don't know if you're going to go to that specific jail. You don't know what prison you're going to end up in when you get locked up. You get in trouble enough, they'll move you around. Yeah. <laughs> for her and for Chris. Some things have changed in the last decade, including a metamorphosis of how Dina talks to her daughter. Every time I see a butterfly, especially a yellow butterfly, I think of Shannon and I talk to Shannon and I feel like that's her coming down to let me know that she's, you know, she's right, walking right beside me. Dina's also found some joy with her son and two new grandchildren. It's really special, but it's also sad too and bittersweet because I know her kids would have been amazing as well. For Dina, the last decade has been one of growth, transformation, but never forgetting the ugly crime. And constant trips to the courthouse. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Yeah, that's terrible, man. And so it, are they on death row? Um, one is. Yeah, they're, 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 they're all been in jail. Like, they're not like, oh, they didn't get a bomb, but they still fighting it. They're fighting it. On the night of Saturday, January 6, 2007, Christopher Newsome and his girlfriend, Shannon Christian, went out together for the last time. Newsome was a 23-year-old carpenter, Christian a 21-year-old senior majoring in sociology at the University of Tennessee. The couple had been dating for about two months and seemed very much smitten with each other. That Saturday night, the couple had eaten a romantic dinner at a Knoxville restaurant. Shannon last spoke with her mother, Denna, at roughly 12.35 a.m. on Sunday, when Shannon said the couple was going to visit a friend to watch some movies. No one ever heard from them again. At 12.24 p.m. Sunday, Christopher's burned corpse was found by a Norfolk Southern Railroad employee near the railroad tracks in a rough area on the north side of Knoxville, Tennessee. The next day, Shannon's Toyota 4Runner was located a few blocks away, it was actually found by Shannon's parents who were canvassing the area after the cell phone company gave police the last known location of their daughter's cell phone. Shannon was nowhere to be found, but crime scene technicians lifted a print from an envelope found in the SUV. Analysis matched the print to Lamericus Davidson, a recently released ex-con living in the area. 
Knoxville Police and Knox County Sheriff's Department investigators got a search warrant for Davidson's home at 2316 Chipman Street. By Tuesday at 2 p.m., they located Shannon Christian's body in a kitchen trash bin. The house was a rental property, but the renters were gone. Police were left with two corpses of a photogenic young couple who had been tortured and killed in the most brutal fashion anyone in Knoxville could remember. As information slowly emerged out of the investigation, it was clear that this was no ordinary crime. It apparently started with a carjacking, said U.S. Marshal Rich Knighton. They did some really nasty things to this lady. There's some evidence she was held and sexually abused for a couple of days. In fact, as police gathered more facts, it became clear that both Newsom and Christian were brutalized beyond imagination. In the wee hours of that Sunday morning, Newsom and Christian were carjacked at gunpoint in her parents' 2005 Toyota 4Runner and brought back to the house on Chipman. Christopher Newsom was raped over and over again. Semen was found in his anus and sodomized with an unknown object. God, does, it, does it make you Never. feel any better about this if, if they were woke? If they were woke? <laughs> oh, shit. No. Do if they were work, woke, Don't do that. Uh, yeah. Ooh. I'm just know, asking. Man. I'm just asking. I don't this know. Is 2006. I wouldn't feel yeah. sorry. I wouldn't feel sorry if they were woke. I'm not going to lie. Listen, even if they were woke, it it like the the fact that some people decided to carjack them and torture them like this. It, silver bags. It it doesn't matter if they're woke or not. Like we're all yes, it does. does. No. Yes, it does. If they voted for this, oh no, man. No. Exactly. All right. You got to think about that, Savage. If they're woke and you woke, yeah, you can't feel sorry for them. But see, in 2007, yeah, it I, wasn't I don't, as big. I find it unlikely that, you know. So, yeah. so, you're, so you're, let me get this straight. They voted for Obama, so they should be raped and, and killed? Well, they didn't vote for no Obama because yeah. it was, the election hadn't happened yet. Yeah, and it's so not they, that they could not have voted for anybody like right. So they, they couldn't have they couldn't have been woke then. Man, I don't give a damn how they voted. We can't have no niggas out here raping men. Yeah, no, besides, <laughs> that's all far beside the fucking point. You've got right. these goddamn grapeist orangutans out here, fucking like you know that's the problem. Right. I, I'm just answering you can the vote question. For anything you fucking want, they're not gonna. That's yeah. not gonna matter. God he should have. He should have died trying. He should have died trying to do something other than just accepting it. That was his problem. But I'm so sick of this voted argument too, because like you see online on the comments all the times, so, this is what happens in a democratic city. It doesn't fucking matter if it's democratic. It's democratic, Republican, or fucking independent, or green, or Tory, or liberal. It doesn't fucking matter. It's wherever black people are. Mm, a message, right? And then, yeah, I mean, and I mean, look, it's it doesn't matter easy how the be... city votes or what what the fucking city, you know, unless the city council's black, then that's much you're know, you're much more likely to have high levels of violence if that's the case. But I think in the Democrat areas I live in, one, a lot of these damn liberals are forced not to be honest. Yeah, I, they know? definitely are not helping. The, like, you know, if I had to pick one, you know, which I'm picking, but it's just like people that. Like Kansas City or whatever, like the, there's plenty of places that are f plenty red, you know, smaller places especially that have outstanding levels of violence. True. There's not many. There's not many red, red places that have violence. I advise you to look at the Gulf South. It may not be many, in Tennessee. But yeah, there's probably enough. And Florida. Yeah, but no one no one deserves this to happen to them. But I mean, yeah, it, I think the question is just like if they were open for this and letting these type of people walk the streets. You know, exactly. That's the yep. question. It's not that hell anyone no, hell, like, hell no, man. Like yeah. most of you think nah, nah, John, John, you can't you, you these liberals have to feel it. Man, they look have at them. Look yeah, at them. Look, these people don't know how savage niggas are. They ain't but live this, this, No, we're not true. saying that. He asked, We're just asking a general question. If they were woke, would you feel sorry? 
I would not. No. I would say thank you. Not so much. Here. I would. I would feel sorry. Not so much. I'd feel a that's the glider yeah, in you, though. I, I understand. <laughs> that's the glider in you. Uh, no, yeah, no, 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 no. I think no, we should that's, be crazy. No, that's like, not let, the glider. Well, Hold on, sir. If this was if this was New York, then I would I wouldn't feel sorry. But right, when you're when okay, you're then so so you're in no. my you're in my situation then exactly. No. If it's New York, then you wouldn't feel sorry for them. Yes, but this isn't. But again, this is a red state, correct? Tennessee's a red state. And what city is this? It's, it's a probably a blue city, Knoxville. Yes, yeah. someone so, said Knoxville went red in the last election. Okay, so the, the point that I the point that I'm saying is even if like if it was a blue state in a blue city, then I wouldn't feel bad. But a problem okay. is, is a lot of these states that are red have blue cities in them. So like you can't Okay, but necessarily- Knox County very strongly voted Republican and voted for Republican president for every in election since two thousand. So so it's like, a very very red conservative Republican area. So and again, this is my point. I would not feel I like I don't feel bad for the fact that I'm not assuming what they vote for. But anyone being tortured and and graped is 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 bad. Right. Like that's just bad in general. Like even if in even in New York there are people that vote red. So like you can't necessarily like if it was an activist that was documented as an activist that ended up going through this, then no. But like in general, you can't just put down everybody. No, but you like I think you just answered the question. So if they were woke, then you would and, and yeah. from New York. Yeah, man. Or spit it out, man. Let's so we can move on, man. Right. Um uh uh what if they were Al Sharpton? So, salute to um, Gary Reeve. He said, keep doing your thing, bruh. The show gets better each day. My daughter's volleyball team made the national championship playoff bracket tomorrow, 17 open. Yeah, shout out to your daughter, man. Salute. You got to tell us what happened, man. You got to keep us abreast of the situation, man. Salute to you and your daughter, man. Um, take the $5 challenge. We've had like, what, six people take the $5 challenge today, man. We can do Check better than that on, right. We can do better than that on a payday off nation, man. Um, but yeah, let's keep it moving. Um he was AK blindfolded, gagged, uh, and bound at the hands app. and feet. Huh? Uh check your cash app. Okay, okay, I got you, I got you. All right. Um and were carjacked at gunpoint in her parents' 2005 Toyota 4Runner and brought back to the house on shipment. Christopher Newsom was raped over and over again. Semen was found in his anus and sodomized with an unknown object. He was blindfolded, gagged, and bound at the hands and feet. After several nightmarish hours, Newsom was either walked barefoot or dragged out to the railroad tracks where he was shot in the back of the head execution style. The assailant shot him two more times, in the back and in the neck. Then Newsom's corpse was doused with gasoline and lit on fire. For Chan and Christian, the torture was even worse. She suffered days of sexual abuse in the Chipman home. She was beaten mercilessly and raped numerous times, suffering excruciating injuries to her mouth, vagina, and anus. Forensic pathologists found not only was Christian raped by her captors, but she'd been penetrated with an object as well, possibly a chair leg, according to the Knox County Medical Examiner. God damn. In addition... Examiners found that a chemical, likely bleach, had been poured down her throat and in her wounded genital areas while she was still alive. The coroner reported that Christian was then tied up with torn strips of bedding, her head covered in a white garbage bag, and then the whole body stuffed in five larger trash bags before being thrown out in a garbage can. Perhaps the most horrifying finding was that Christian was still alive at the time, Her death came after the slow process of suffocation in that trash container. Yeah, man. um, Nostrils. I feel sorry for these people, even if they were woke, man. 
Like, yeah, even if these yeah. people were woke, man, and, it's like, God nah. damn. Nah. I'm evil, man. <laughs> and, and like, they're, 2007 woke, like, they were like, oh, I believe in one human race. No, see, they, they believed, like, you know, maybe they were thinking, like, maybe, you know, there could be a black president. Obama was on the scene. Yeah, exactly. You know, they were thinking, like, you know, maybe it's time. Maybe it's time. You know, for the country, you know, to move forward and, and go ahead and take that nasty plunge, man. Well, let's be fair, because like after Obama, after Obama's when Obama, Obama made the racial, the the racial uh, camaraderie, he he messed that up. Prior to that, people were moving towards not being having racial problems. The yeah, '90s yeah. was great. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. It was. It was always there, but. The, the way it is now is like I like as a black person in like 2007 I mean you just you just could never believe that it would be like this man um it, it is it is it is bad everybody's pro-black all these Negroes was never pro-black back in the day when I, I grew Hell up in the no. pro-black community and shit and you was kind of like a weirdo or a yeah. You know what I'm saying? A, um, yeah. a misfit if you was pro black. Yeah, yeah. Now it's like it's mainstream. Um, but yeah, look, look, man, like she, she, who had it worse? That's what I want to know. Um, My man, man anus had it worse. His huh? anus, his anus had it worse. <laughs> yeah, so man, she got it look at her and him and and said, "Get him." They they went for him first. That says a lot to me. That's crazy. Yeah. He, 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 he died quick though, but he like died quick though. You she think he died like, quick. Yeah, they shot him she, in the head. No, but he was raped for a long. Well, yeah, he she was raped for days. For days. He, was raped, he just got raped that night multiple times. Yeah, yeah. and she suffocated to death. Like he at least got a bullet in the head. He got. Yeah, his, but yeah, but he, he could have still been alive when they set him on fire. Just because he got a bullet doesn't mean he was dead. In his head and his neck and back. I mean. He was out close enough. Yeah, but they immediately set him on fire, so he could have he could have still been alive. That's true. Ouch. Possibly. I mean, possibly. I want to know from the chat. One, if you think she had it worse. Two, if you think he got it worse. And in that trash container. Police immediately began searching for the renter of 2316 Chipman Street a convicted felon named Lamarcus Davidson. Davidson had recently finished a five-year prison sentence. Um, you mean, um, Marshawn Lynch? Sentence <laughs> for a previous carjacking and robbery charge. Law enforcement also sought Davidson's brother, Latalvis Cobbins. Latalvis. By Wednesday, January the 11th, 2007, authorities had arrested Davidson in Knoxville. Cobbins and his friend George Thomas were picked up by U.S. Marshals in Lebanon, Kentucky. Further investigation led to the arrest of Cobbins' girlfriend, Vanessa Coleman, who witnessed the kidnapped couple in the house on Chipman Street. On January 31, 2007, a grand jury handed down a 46-count indictment against the four defendants. There was a woman there who didn't help that girl, who didn't say, hey, y'all, man, leave that motherfucker girl alone. One of the girlfriends of the dudes, uh, you know, raping her over and over again. That's crazy. That Just is that, no problem with that. That's but that shows you the hate. Listen, we see it in the, in the WNBA, and I'm not trying to compare the WNBA to this, but I've I've been on the record. Those of you who've been around for a long time, black women, there's no greater hate between any group than <laughs> between black women and white people. Oh, okay, I mean, they if this just, happened to Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese would do an interview, and be like, "Yeah, you know, I heard about that. That's real sad." And then she'd do a little smirk to the side off the camera. Right. <laughs> right. The attackers would be tried separately, but the first person convicted in the case would be a man who had no contact with Newsom or Christian. Dwayne Boyd was convicted by a federal jury on April 16, 2008, as an accessory to the carjacking for yeah, his role in hiding Davidson in the days after the killings. He'd be sentenced to 18 years in prison. On August 25, 2009, a Davidson County jury. There was too much media coverage to find an impartial jury in Knox County, 
So a jury was bussed in from Nashville and sequestered, wow. convicted 26-year-old Latalvis Cobbins of the first-degree murder and rape of Chan and Christian. He was acquitted for the Newsom rape counts and convicted of a lesser facilitation charge in regard to Newsom's death. Prosecutors had called Cobbins the second-in-command during the crimes and had used forensic investigation to link Cobbins' DNA to the victim's remains. Cobbins took the stand in his own defense, telling jurors that he had consensual oral sex with Christian, wow. offered with the promise that he'd... Uh, wow. Yeah, so the father yeah, this is and the and to listen to that. I'm sure she got suffocated, but, you know, it was consensual before that. No, he's talking about the guy, right, Christian? Yeah, Christian, yeah. Christian's Chris oh. the guy. No, Channon is the girl. Chris is the guy. Yeah, yeah. He, so he he said he had some consensual oral sex with Christian. That's because his semen was in the guy's mouth, and they like, yo, how did your semen get in his mouth? And he, that's his oh, lie. Yeah. He says, oh, okay, pause. Cobbins took the stand in his own defense, telling jurors that he had consensual. That guy died getting butt butt pumped and giving head to a bunch of sun men in front of his girl. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. And he couldn't help her. Not only could he not help her, but he was getting some. he was getting like he was getting like blacked. Ramrodded. <laughs> in front of his girl, yeah. yo. I don't care how woke these people were, man. I don't give a damn if these people well, fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like, Joy Reid level woke. This shit is fucked up, dog. Actual yep. oral sex with Christian. Offered with the promise that he'd set her free afterward. But oh, no, he can... Christian is the girl. Oh, the girl. Mm. But he said, he said, he said he had consensual sex with her with the promise that he set her free afterwards. <laughs> That's not consensual, jackass. That's sad. Crimes. To what? And had used forensic investigation to link Cobbins' DNA to the victim's remains. Cobbins took the stand in his own defense, telling jurors that he had consensual oral sex with Christian, offered with the promise that he'd set her free afterward. But he conceded that he left her in captivity afterward and admitted that he was present when Christian was stuffed in the garbage can and left to die. Jurors ultimately opted to spare Cobbins from the death penalty and wow. instead found. <laughs> yeah, spare What is wrong country? with you gliders, yo? Wow. Hey, man, if it were me, this dude and uh, many others would be strung up along the highway in Tennessee, all right? And they'd still be there. Shit. Found he should be sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Yo, he's good. Life in prison is good for him. He, yeah, he's he gonna adjust to that in like six months. That's his new thing. It probably no, nah, 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 listen, listen, listen. Jury duty is a is a is a glad thing. Sons don't show up for jury duty like that. That's not true. Sons do show up for jury duty. No, and, and they yes, they do. I mean, and they regularly OJ. I, I did cases. Has I did been? when I was in college. Never yeah. went. No, I went. I went twice, but I got I out of I'm it. I'm not disputing that was men fuck off a of jury duty more often than any other group. I'm sure that's true, but uh, they show up. Yeah, I, I showed up twice. Like I said, I was a student, so they dismissed me. We don't. We don't really do the civil duty, but whatever, man. Um, let's move on. The next defendant to stand trial was 28 year old Lamaricus Davidson, the man who rented the house in which the crimes took place, and who prosecutors said plan the rapes and murders. At trial, the state linked Davidson to a fingerprint in Christian's Toyota and to the gun believed to be the murder weapon in Newsom's murder. Six six Davidson's oh, DNA is found on big. Christian, but not on Newsom. Big old, big old mean son, man. On October 28th, 2009, Davidson was convicted on 35 of 38 total counts. He wasn't convicted of raping Newsom, including the first degree murder of both so victims. So two dudes got <laughs> off a rape with it, and who who like did like? <laughs> See, let me get this straight. You go into a convenience store with three dudes, and one of your boys kills the clerk, and you all get charged with murder. But if you're just raping a bunch of gliders in the house, and you're all there, and not everybody's getting charged with that. The they fuck? Gotta, yeah, they got a they got a fine tooth comb that one out. 
Well, yeah, thanks for, thanks for our glider justice system. Well, you know, you beat everybody else up in the house, but we didn't find your semen in her, so um, you won't be charged for the rape, strictly speaking. But she did orchestrate it and rent the house, but yeah, okay. Salute to Saul, man. Saul says people doing their best this year. Ugh. Shout out to my man, Savage Red, coming through again. Big times. Shout out to Savage Red in the building man savage red in the building salute to you man um salute to um eric s Ock nation hall of famer coming through once again um yeah guys make sure you take the five dollar challenge support the channel via paypal cash app with the super chat <sighs> the penalty phase started the next day the jury was sent back to decide davidson's fate on october 30th 2009 after approximately three hours of deliberation, the panel sentenced the ringleader to death by lethal injection. Okay. Oh, wow. George right. Thomas, 26, was a friend of Latalvis Cobbins and the third man to be tried for the murder rape of Christian and Newsom. Thomas's defense attorneys had the best shot at an acquittal thus far, as there was no DNA, fingerprint, or eyewitness evidence against their client. Thomas had admitting being in the Chipman Street house at the time but denied taking part in any crimes against the couple. Regardless, the evidence was strong enough for a Hamilton County jury to hand down 38 guilty verdicts, including first-degree murder, rape, robbery, and kidnapping. The verdict came down on December 8, 2009. Two days later, that same jury recommended Thomas serve a sentence of life imprisonment with no chance of parole. The last trial would be the most difficult for prosecutors. 21-year-old Vanessa Coleman, Latalvis Cobbins' girlfriend, admitted being at the house and witnessing the strangling of Chan and Christian. But she said she was paralyzed by fear and that she'd been threatened with harm if she tried to leave and alert authorities. Hell yeah. Moreover, there was no forensic evidence linking her to either victim. You believe that? Hell yeah, man. I don't believe that at all because I heard... Mm -hmm. let, 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 hold on, let, 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 let me let it play. I don't believe that at all. I don't believe she was threatened up because... Niggas don't even really act like that when it's like, when it's when it's a situation like that. Because the girl, you don't have to do that. She ain't. All right, let me let we'll, we'll see. I I I don't believe it. You believe it? We'll see. We'll see. We'll yeah, see. yeah. Let's see. On May thirteenth, twenty ten, Coleman was acquitted of the first degree murder of Christian and of all charges pertaining to Newsom. However, she was convicted of facilitation in the murder and rapes of Christian. On July 30th, 2010, Judge Richard Baumgartner rejected the defense's plea for leniency and sentenced Coleman to 53 years behind bars. With the last of the trials done and the defendants behind bars for decades, the terrible story seemed to be over. But this case had been sensational from the start, and there would be more controversy to come. Although the horrors inflicted upon Chan and Christian and Christopher Newsom were luridly savage, the national news media was slow to pick up the story. Conservative commentators and right-wing blogs insisted that the crimes were being ignored by mainstream media out of a perverse sense of political correctness, simply because the victims were white and the suspects were black. Well, they were. TV pundit and conservative columnist Michelle Malkin said, there's a discomfort level with stories that have black assailants and white victims. If it doesn't fit some sort of premeditated narrative of how we view taboo subjects like race and crime, there's a disinclination to cover it. The controversy over the media's treatment of the killings spilled onto the streets of Knoxville on May 26, 2007, when 30 or so white supremacists gathered to protest the perceived lack of coverage. Hal Turner, an internet talk show host, summed up the protest's objectives with abrasive rhetoric. The goal of this rally is twofold. We want to tell the liberal media we're tired of them spiking stories about black-on-white crime. Our second goal is to tell the black community they have to restrain their black hoodlums. Mm. A throng of social activists calling themselves the Coop Klutz Clowns showed up in clown makeup to stage a counter-protest. Although oh. Knoxville police deemed the event fairly orderly, they ended up arresting white supremacist organizer Alex Linder for disorderly wow. conduct and resisting arrest. Yikes. For its part, prosecutors denied the crimes, while undeniably appalling in nature, 
should be considered hate crimes. We have no evidence to support the notion that this was a race-based crime, said Knoxville Police Chief. The prosecutor said it wasn't a, a hate crime. It's never a hate crime when a black person does it to a white person. Yeah, and that's oh. the pure Sterling hate. Owen. Yeah, exactly. Pure hate. We see this as a cold-blooded murder. Those beliefs were echoed by Knox County DA Randy Nichols. It was a terrible crime, a horrendous crime, but race was not a motive. We know from our investigation that the people charged in this case were friends with white people, socialized with white people, dated white people. Oh my God. There's no evidence I'm of sure. any racial animus. Try that the other way. Let, let, let some white people say, I had a white, I, have, I got black friends. Right. See how that works. We shut that shit down. There's evidence to the I, contrary. I bet you if I shot the victims a black intruder in my house, somewhat having black kids, it'd be a race crime. Yep. Conflicted about the idea of hate crime. Shannon's father, Gary Christian, told reporters, there are people out there that just want to make something even worse than what it already is. I think any kind of crime like that's a hate crime. Was it racial? No, I don't think so. Christopher's parents were less certain. Hugh Newsome opined to a local TV reporter, would they have done that to a black couple? I don't think so. No, I don't think Christopher's so, yeah. mother, Mary, added, with all the things they did to them, what else could you call it but hate? Knox County Criminal Court Judge Richard Baumgartner presided over all four high-profile trials of the Christian Newsom murder judges defendants. That look like this. Promoted to the bench in 1992, Baumgartner had served without incident through most of the next two decades. But court watchers noted the judge could seem dazed and impaired at times. In 2010, Judge Baumgartner caused awkward moments just before the announcement of the jury's decision in the trial of Nessa Coleman as he stumbled to correctly read over the verdict form. In January 2011, Baumgartner made a surprise decision oh to take a medical leave. That news was quickly followed by revelations that the judge was under criminal investigation. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, TBI, had found evidence that Baumgartner had obtained prescription pain medication from a felon named Christopher Lee Gibson, whose oh, probation God. came before Judge Baumgartner. By March 2011, Judge Baumgartner had pled guilty to felony official misconduct. All of his prior cases would be put under strict scrutiny. Wow. Oh, no. Oh, God. This so is... So, in, in the guy's ass, um... <laughs> Because yeah, black guys no now. <laughs> Damn. Damn. We found your semen in this guy's ass, but the judge uh, bought some prescription pills from a felon. So uh <laughs> we gotta review <laughs> this. <laughs> we gotta re-review this. <laughs> so we gotta start over. Hey, what the fuck, man? But well, see, in 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 most POC people of color um areas, homogeneous areas, these these guys are already be dead. So yeah. it wouldn't even even if this came up, they would be dead already. So <laughs> from defense attorneys and prosecutors alike. On December 1st, 2011, Special Judge John Kerry Blackwood ruled that the trials of all four defendants, Lamericus Davidson, Latalvis Cobbins, George Thomas, and Vanessa Coleman, were structurally flawed by Baumgartner's on-bench intoxication and would have to be done all over again. Oh, my God. Citing the TBI probe into Baumgartner's pill-popping, Judge Blackwood said, He committed a crime every day. That's every day he's sitting on this bench in this robe. There's no other conclusion wow. this court can make but that there was structural error. That the cases will have to be tried There's again was bad news for prosecutors, up, yeah. but there was a more immediate effect as well. Because three of the four juries had rejected the death penalty already, only Davidson can face the ultimate punishment in his retrial. In March 2012, the Tennessee Attorney General's office stepped in to ask the State Court of Criminal Appeals to hold off on the new trials for the Christian Newsom defendants. But Knox County prosecutors were gearing up for retrials scheduled to begin in June 2012. All four defendants remained behind bars as they awaited their next day in court. Judge Blackwood announced he'd try the cases in Knox County, but select jurors from faraway counties who have not been tainted by the years of publicity. In the meantime, 
Lamericus Davidson pled guilty to a robbery that took place in a Knoxville pizza hut on January the 8th, 2007, <sighs> just a day after the killings. Damn, wow. He received a sentence of eight years for the robbery. That time would not be added to whatever punishment he's meted in his murder rape retrial. The sentences would run concurrently. While the families of Chan and Christian and Christopher Newsom must get set to relive the tragic events again and again in a series of retrials, supporters were able to remember the loss in a positive way. On March 26, 2012, the Christopher Newsom Memorial Baseball Tournament was held at Halls Community Park in Knoxville. Proceeds from gate fees and t-shirt sales were put into a scholarship fund in Newsom's name to provide scholarships for graduating seniors of Halls High School Newsom's alma mater. Vanessa Coleman, the only female charged and convicted in the crimes, is held at the Tennessee Prison for Women, now known as the Deborah K. Johnson Rehabilitation Center in Nashville. Serving a 35-year sentence, Coleman was eligible for parole in 2017, and her sentence expires on April 18, 2036. In August 2014, the families of the victims were notified that, with good behavior, Coleman's sentence was being reduced to 16 days per month of incarceration, making her eligible for parole consideration in October 2014. Wow. Holy so racist. Shit. Parole hearing was rescheduled from October to December. At the December 2014 hearing, Coleman was denied parole, and her next parole consideration date was set for December 2020. Coleman again went before a parole board on December 8, 2020. Christian and Newsom's mothers and Christian's father gave statements to the board opposing parole. The seven board members voted unanimously to deny Coleman parole and ensure that she would not be eligible to go before a parole board again for 10 years. Great. Cobbins and Thomas were originally incarcerated at Riverbend Maximum Security Institution in Nashville. After the Bledsoe County Correctional Complex in Pikeville opened in 2012, they were transferred to that facility. Cobbins is currently serving a life sentence without parole at the Northwest Correctional Complex. Thomas is incarcerated at the Northeast Correctional Complex. His sentence ends in May 2053. Davidson was sentenced to death on October 30, 2009, and is incarcerated at the Riverbend Maximum Security Institution. Eric Boyd, who had been serving his sentence of 18 years at Federal Correctional Institution Beckley, a medium security prison near Beaver, West Virginia, was potentially eligible for release in 2022, but found guilty on charges of rape and first-degree murder on August 13, 2019. He was immediately sentenced to life in prison by the judge, who stated that a life sentence was automatic for the murder conviction. Wait, uh, for that one or for another one? Yeah, wait, what? Do we even have to? It could be either one. We had heard a report on TV about a body being found that was badly burned on the railroad tracks, but never did we ever connect the, the two. We were two blocks from where she was. If they'd have just knocked on the door, walked the streets, we I don't we don't know if we could have saved her life, but she wouldn't have sat there for two days in a trash can. Anybody that knew Chris was his friend and and he had a smile that everybody just loved. Chris was an excellent baseball player. A good boy, good kid, worked hard, uh, had a lot of skills. Could have went on and played further if he'd have chose to. She was a typical girl. I mean, she wasn't perfect. Nobody's perfect, but she was, never gave us any trouble, always did well in school. She was beautiful, but what made her even more beautiful was the fact that she was not stuck on herself. Shannon Christian was a 21-year-old student at the University of Tennessee. Chris Newsom was a 23-year-old trim carpenter. Both were still living at home and had just begun to date in November of 2006. 
One Saturday evening, they planned to go to a birthday party for a friend, but instead they decided to stay at Shannon's best friend's apartment to watch a movie. 12.35, the phone rang that night, and he spoke to, spoke to her on the phone. She called to check in to let us know that she was coming home rather than um, staying at Kara's that night. And I sat up, and she never came home. We had not seen him since Saturday night, which that's, that's not unusual. He was 23 years old, and he kind of came and went, you know, with not a whole lot of restrictions at that age. And uh, the way we discovered he was missing was Shannon's mother, Dina, called and said that Shannon didn't show up for work. In the early morning hours of January 7, 2007, Chris Newsom and Shannon Christian were carjacked and abducted from the Washington Ridge Apartments. They were held captive in a house on Chipman Street near the Waste Connections building. Both were brutally raped and beaten. Chris was led to the railroad tracks near the house, where he was shot three times, twice in the back and once to the head execution style. Then his body was set on fire. On Monday, a body found on the railroad tracks. It's terrible, man. Hey, I just think, like, with the sister, like, imagine what she's seen them do before that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> For that like, to be normal. Yeah, so, like, I, I, she, what does she, she knows she can't do nothing but watch. They probably brought her along, you know, you know some of these niggas be savages like that. She probably was with it, but I don't know to what degree. Nah, she wasn't with it, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, maybe she thought that they was just going to rob him. I think she might have been with that. But I don't know, man. Them dudes. I've been doing my... Uh, she never came into work that day. It was at this moment, Hold on, January. Me... I heard, I saw... A comforter had been about... run to cause trouble. Lamaricus was poor and frustrated at his lack of money decided that he is going to steal a car. So that was it. Right. They set off into the night. And that's when they came across Chris and Shannon. Chris would be murdered first. He was raped and seriously beaten. And they did all of this in front of Shannon too and made her watch. After this, they led Chris to the railroad tracks. This is where they would take his life. Davidson encourages Thomas to kill Chris. So he fires a bullet into the neck and then in the back. Chris was very much still alive at this point and he was paralyzed laying on the ground. Prolonging the suffering, they left him for a moment until Davidson then shoots Chris in the head, execution style. The absolute brutality of this killing is enough to cause some serious disgust and rage. But the gang were not done yet. Far from it. In an attempt to hide potential evidence, they wrapped his body in the comforter. And that's when they doused his body with gasoline and set him alight. While Davidson and Thomas were on the tracks with Chris, Shannon was left with Vanessa Coleman. When they came back from the railroad, they set upon her. They tied her up and savagely beat and raped her too. And the gang mutilated both Chris and Shannon's bodies while they were still alive. The full details are just too graphic to share. But with a quick Google search, you'll be able to find out exactly what happened to them in full detail and the severity of their injuries. But if I'm honest, you need a strong stomach for that. The attackers then told her that if she was to comply, they would let her go. Vanessa was the only female complicit in this crime, was fully aware of what was happening to Shannon during the 24-hour torture of her. She did nothing and made no attempt to help her, apart from occasionally bring her water. She had many chances to help, as the two women were alone in the house together on multiple occasions. Shannon was then strangled and beaten until she was no longer conscious, though still very much alive. They then tied her up in a fetal position. 
Davidson in an attempt to destroy his DNA poured bleach down her throat and inside her body. She was then wrapped in five bin bags and a white shopping bag was placed over her head. They then stuffed her into a trash can. Shannon slowly suffocated to death. Her eyes were open when she died and her body would soon be found. To pick up where we left off before, the police managed to find DNA on an envelope in Shannon's car. So the police made their way to 2316 Chip. So the girl, she was, she, that girl, that girl was c- complicit, man. Um, <laughs> what was she going to do, though? Like, we just set the girl free. What the fuck was she going to do, though? That's what I'm saying. I, I don't know, man. Character is what you do. When no, like in situations like that, though, I get the whole blackly black thing. She can't, you know what I'm saying? She can't snitch and all that stuff. Yeah, I get all that. Trust me. I no, get not that. even that. Just like, but what? Like, they left her alone in the house. Like, when they left out to do stuff, they left her alone with the girl. Yeah, what was she going to do? Set her free? Wait, and if, if they would do that to strangers, imagine what they would do to her. If her boyfriend, <laughs> like, if her boyfriend would sit there and rape somebody in front of her, imagine what he would do to her. No, I got you. I understand. Yeah. Completely. It's one that I'm looking. And then Chris was separated and tied up. Then they talked about, they wrapped his body in a blanket. They talked they stamped about the her. The rest of her body was covered in bruised material and tied it between. She died slowly from a comp morning meaning that she was probably tortured for around 24 hours before being placed into the bin chris newsom's charred body was discovered by a railroad worker found a cold lifeless arm sticking up out of a plastic bag partially covered in the bedding material they then knew that they'd found shannon's body hold on man it was one where they talked about the girl the black girl and they said that she like Went, she she wasn't from that town, and when she went back to her town, she was telling people that she had a wild weekend or some shit like that, I'm trying to find uh, that one. Okay. Yeah, she wasn't like she didn't see it as a big deal. She's just like, damn, we had a wild ass weekend over in Knoxville. <laughs> damn. Yeah. And I mean, I guess you can't blame her for that for not being outraged, but what she saw. But um, I mean, what's she gonna do? Be like, oh, I. I witnessed the murder. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Was she bragging? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I got. I'll find it and I play it. But yeah, salute to everybody, man. Great show, man. Same black time, same black channel. I'm out of here. Peace out. All right, Peace. Peace, y'all.